the system that we have phase detector and a frequency divider and the output of the phase detector drives the PCO ok. So, the input is really a voltage and everything I mean all the signals are voltages, but we detect the phase of the input voltage and phase of the feedback voltage subtract it to obtain the control voltage ok. And this has a certain phase fine, if this has phi out this will have a phase phi out by n that again is easy to see if you see that let us say we take a divide by 2 counter ok. So, this will be the output of a divide by 2 counter ok for every 2 cycles of the input we get 1 cycle at the output. Now, if you shift the input by a certain time the output shifts by the same time ok, but the output period is 2 times the input. So, so the same amount of time corresponds to half the phase shift. Okay. So, when you divide the frequency by n you also divide the phase by n ok is this part clear. Now, the phase detector output is this ok and the <coughs> VCO output frequency is K VCO times V control plus F naught where F naught is the free running frequency of the VCO and what is the output phase of the VCO yeah it is 2 pi times integral of uh, F out d t ok. The voltage waveforms can be complicated because you are only concerned with uh, periodic waveforms and it does not have to be a sine wave frequently it is not a sine wave it is a square wave and so on ok. So, <coughs> and it is really a distraction what we really want is the phase to be aligned with the input phase we do not care about the voltages. So, it is better to have a model in terms of uh, phases than with than in terms of the voltages because that is more relevant in this particular case. So, how do we do that? So, we can use these equations to make a block diagram purely in terms of phases ok. So, we have to get V control from phi in and phi out by n that we get from this equation ok. So, we have uh, phi in this uh, feedback phase which is phi out by n and this can be represented as an amplifier of gain k phi is not it? is it ok. So, this represents the phase detector the frequency divider similarly is an attenuator or an amplifier of gain 1 over n in terms of phases and what is the model for the VCO before VCO we have an integrator. So, I have to go from see I have uh, almost everything now I have the control voltage here. Now, the part of the thing that is missing is I have to go between the control voltage and the output phase what is the model for that hmm? uh, you just implement these two equations right. So, you have to implement these two equations. So, you multiply this by K V C O add F naught sorry this is plus and then you have an integrator ok and this gives me the output phase is this ok. So, what I am trying to do here is to derive the usual phase model that you see in the textbook, but I do not know if how many of you are already familiar with it what do you see in that model that is because you put a low pass filter, but uh, that is not the main difference is you do not see this F naught and so on what does that model represent that is what uh, I am trying to derive. So, this is <coughs> the model for the uh, VCO right in terms of the phases and this part is in this control voltage is also relevant and that part is still as a control voltage ok. So, we relate the input phase to the output phase and there are some other quantities in the 
loop which depend on the blocks that you use here is the divided by n and here is the gain of the phase detector gain of the phase detector the gain of the vco and f naught okay which is an offset yeah that's correct oh yeah so maybe i should uh, put that also so k phi is in radians per volts okay sorry volts per radian volts per radian and uh, kvco is in hertz per volt okay so neither of this is uh, dimensionless this has uh, this has dimensions of volts this has dimensions of hertz per volt now let's say we introduce certain disturbance somewhere in the loop okay it could be perhaps at the input itself this will be some disturbed value compared to it will be a new value which i'll express as the old value plus some delta this offset will still be f not and we have the integral and we have phi out plus delta phi out okay if we have an increment in the input quantity or maybe we can introduce some disturbance in the loop so every quantity will be changed or in general it will be changed and we represent that as the original quantity plus some increment okay this is just like what you do for a circuit and for voltages and currents you have the operating point of the circuit and you change the some condition some input to the circuit and you represent the result as the operating point plus the increment of course in general everything will be changed so you can think of this as the operating point and this as the increment from the operating point okay and as in circuits we construct a model that has only the increments right so what will be that in this case so same thing with delta pi huh so the difference is see you take the difference between these quantities uh the quantity is after the disturbance is applied and quantity is before the disturbance is applied now this constant offset of f0 will get cancelled out this is exactly this is analogous to for instance the power supply voltage does not appear in the incremental model of the circuit because it's the same between the original uh, operating point and the incremental i mean the incremented circuit okay incremented condition and we have in this case this offset of f0 is gone we have kvco and the integrator i'll represent that as a single block both of them represent the vco okay okay this is phi out and this is the model that you see in the textbooks so it's also important to recognize what this is the model of this is the model of a vco operating in steady state and you apply increments to it this is the model that relates the incremental phases and voltages in the circuit that is the incremental phase at the input and output and the control voltage okay these are all deltas but uh, i think here onwards to avoid the uh, uh, complicated symbols i'll omit the delta and say fine it should be understood that it is the increment okay i should, should have really used upper case phi in for the total phase and uh, lower case phi in for the incremental phase so but this is the model this is the classical model that uh, implements i mean that relates the increments in phase to increments in the increments in phase and the increments in the control voltage in the phase lock loop okay so with this we will be able to figure out what happens when we introduce disturbances now let's go back and see what happens with the phase detector that we had okay now in this case our phase detector model was that it simply gives you k pi times phi in minus phi out by n what does the xor give you xor was the first suggestion for a phase detector right let me go to a new page let's say we have two waveforms of identical frequency but different phases okay so this is delta phi that is the phase difference that is applied to the uh, phase difference between the two inputs of the xor phase detector so the output average is delta phi minus phi by 2 okay and the actual output is the average value of the output plus some periodic waveform okay what is the period of this waveform 
let us say this is the these two frequencies are some f n what will be the what is the frequency of the periodic waveform 2 times f n ok. This is something at 2 times f n because at every edge you get some something like this. So, actually this whole discussion is going towards why we do not use a XOR phase detector. Firstly, we have this disturbance that we probably cannot avoid because uh, it turns out that in every phase detector this will happen ok. So, how do we what do we do now? So, we have this uh, we started off with the model assuming that the phase detector output will be simply k phi times the difference between the phases of the two inputs. Now, what we get in reality is something different. So, how do we put that back into the model? What happens because of this? Firstly, there will be an offset of uh, pi by 2. This we already know I think the output average will be 0 when the phase difference is pi by 2. And what else what do you do with this? No, no that is uh, not what uh, how do we include that in the model? What is the effect of that? So, essentially see what uh, so this is in some form I will uh, express this as ok. So, there will be an offset to the phase difference and there will also be a time varying disturbance ok. So, this model is applicable with a couple of modifications. So, I need to add an offset of minus pi by 2 and I also need to add this E 1 of t ok to this model. So, this was the model that related the disturbances in phase at different points right. So, I can add the disturbance in the phase detector also to the same model is not it is that ok or no. So, now you can clearly see that if I put a periodic input to this that will create a periodic variation in delta phi out and it does not need any variation in delta phi in even if delta phi in is 0 even if the phase disturbance at because of the input is 0 there will be some disturbance in the output phase ok. Now, we have to calculate how much that is and see if that is too large or too small is this part clear not get rid of it it will be some part right. So, this is a what is this this is a first order system you have one integrator and some gains. So, there will be some transfer function between this and that. So, it will not get rid of it, but it will it could potentially reduce it. So, we will see if that is even possible ok. So, one thing is it introduces these disturbances what is like what other disadvantage you see with the XOR phase detector or is it perfectly fine like uh, let us forget the part about the disturbance there is some problem because there may be problems because of that, but what other uh, issues do you see with this sensitivity to duty cycle that is actually yeah what happens if the duty cycle is not 50 percent and especially what happens if the two duty cycles are different you know what a duty cycle is right the fraction of time for which it is high. So, let us say the duty cycles of these two are different or maybe they are identical to each other, but not they, they are not 50 percent. It causes an offset I mean if uh, the two duty cycles are different also it causes an offset right. So, it is uh, something I mean it is very it is sensitive to duty cycle is this a relevant uh, problem I mean do will we have uh, waveforms with uh, non 50 percent duty cycle. Yeah, it is true I mean first of all you can easily see that if the duty cycle is not 50 percent and especially if the two duty cycles are not the same you can have a problem and that offset is, uh, is I mean it can become a complicated function if one of them has a narrow duty cycle it will become uh, sensitive in weird ways. So, you can work that out for yourself you can just put a small duty cycle for one large duty cycle for the other one and see what the output looks like ok it is quite simple to analyze. Now, is this a relevant problem I mean will we have uh, in a phase lock loop is this relevant will we have non 50 percent duty cycles yes huh? no not necessarily right actually we are using in fact it is not a sinusoid particularly because we are using a frequency divider the output of a frequency divider is most almost certainly non 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 50 percent duty cycle right depending on what you divide by. So, if you have a divide by 3 counter what will be the duty cycle at the output? 
one third or two thirds, right? Because you basically leave the output high for one pulse and low for two pulses. So this duty cycle sensitivity is not very good. So that is one reason why you can't use the XOR phase detector. Okay. The other one is this: uh, the amplitude of this uh, error signal is quite large. What is the amplitude of this? What is the amplitude of E of T? The peak to peak amplitude of E of T? Two, right? So, what is the amplitude of E1 of T? Pi. So, that is a large signal, right? So, pi is like half of the cycle, isn't it? So, it is a, is this point clear? So, this disturbance, I mean, if it is small, you can always neglect it. I mean, in a real circuit, you will always have all kinds of non idealities. You have disturbances here, the disturbances are quite large, okay. And also, it is sensitive to duty cycle and it has a large additional error E of T, okay. Huh? Oh, E of T is just see this uh, this waveform. This is the actual output of the phase detector. That is equal to a certain average value. In this particular case, perhaps this plus the waveform. Okay. So I can represent the same waveform as a sum of its average value, in which in this particular example is negative, plus a waveform which looks like this. Okay. I divide this into two parts, one of which is just the average value and the other one which has zero average. Okay. Is this okay? So how do we get rid of the sensitivity to duty cycle? Okay, so how do you do that? Like what is the what's the circuit that might do that? You can't use the XOR, right? You can't use something like an XOR. And finally, what is the output of an XOR if the input frequencies are different? What is the output of an XOR phase detector if the two input frequencies are different? Let us assume 50 percent duty cycle for both inputs, but the frequencies can be different. Huh? Output will be? What is the average output frequency? I mean sorry, average output voltage. Is the question clear? The XOR inputs have 50 percent duty cycles, but they are of different frequency. What will be the output? How would you go about calculating this? Huh? Uh, okay, let us uh, yeah, what about uh, if it is not an integer multiple? Huh? Average will be 0, right? See, the XOR detector is nothing but a multiplier, right? So, in this case, if you look at these two, it gives you a 1 when the outputs are unlike and it gives you the, uh, like minus 1 when the outputs are the same sign. So, the actual uh, uh, law governing this is minus V1 times V2, okay. And minus V1 times V2 and I said uh, V1 and V2 could be of uh, different uh, frequencies. So, but they are square waves, okay. So, I can say it is minus uh, sin of cos 2 pi f 1 t sin of cos 2 pi f 2 t okay, which is also the sin of cos 2 pi f 1 t times cos 2 pi f 2 t. What is the average value of this? 0. Right. So, that is another it turns out to be another problem with this that when the frequencies are different the uh, average value is 0. Okay. So, normally when a phase log loop starts up the phase frequencies will be different, but the average is 0. So, that means that the VCO is not really driven towards any side. Okay. In reality what happens is if the frequency difference is very small, then it gets uh, driven to some extent and then that uh, lets the PLL capture the input signal. That is known as the capture range for those of you who are familiar with it, but the capture range with an XOR phase detector is very small. Okay. That is yet another reason why you do not want to use an XOR gate as a phase detector. Okay. So, it is sensitive to duty cycle and it has a 0 average output when the frequencies are different 
leading to a very small capture range and both are uh, realistic conditions. Duty cycle sensitivity is important because especially in the feedback path you have a divider which almost certainly will give you a non 50 percent duty cycle ok and this frequency uh, diff the output for different frequencies inputs at different frequencies is important because especially at startup they will be at different frequencies ok. So, you would prefer to have something else where if the input frequencies are different it will get driven in the right direction ok. It should give you a non zero average value which will drive the VCO in the correct direction ok. So, let us first go about making a uh, making a phase detector which is not sensitive to duty cycle how would we do that. I have two inputs A and B I want to determine the phase difference between A and B, but it should not be sensitive to duty cycle. So, that means that it can only be sensitive to one of the edges right. So, if it is sensitive to both edges then it will be sensitive to duty cycle. So, let us say I want A and B and I want really the phase difference between or the time difference between the rising edge of A and rising edge of B. How would I make a circuit that implements that? Ah, Where is the clock? <laughs> you are trying to generate it right there is no other third clock which will do all this. No, the problem is I have uh, <coughs> two signals A and B. A and B could be like this for now assume that they are the same frequency they could have different duty cycles, but what I want is a measure of how far the rising edges are from each other ok and so you need to use uh, some arrangement with flip flops to do this. So, <coughs> let us say essentially what I want is let us say if A is leading B when A at the rising edge of A the output should go high and at the rising edge of B the output should go low ok that is what I would want right that gives me the measure that gives me a measure of the phase difference between the two. How do I get a waveform which goes high when the rising edge of A appears? I can use a D flip flop with the D input tied to 1 ok and I tie A to this. Now, the problem with this is that uh, it just becomes 1 once and then it stays that way forever. So, what do I do? I need to yeah I need to reset when the rising edge of B appears ok. So, let us say this is the reset can I do this hmm? why not which will remain on yeah the reset will uh, remain on. So, what do I do the second flip flop also has to get reset see there are two problems with this one is that yeah it resets it once it works for one pulse. So, marginal improvement on our previous circuit, but uh, uh, that is it it works for one pulse and that is the uh, end of it and also what happens if B leads A again it does not work right. So, the circuit has to be symmetric with respect to B and A if A leads B and B leads A it should work connect that Q to this uh, reset does this work <coughs> because when uh, <laughs> now it is permanently reset. So, <laughs> so, it should actually momentarily reset when A and B simultaneously go high ok. If A is high and B becomes high it should get reset or if B is high and A becomes high at that point it should get reset. So, A B uh, A and B are applied to the clocks these are uh, this is one this is also one <coughs> ok and both of them have a reset input. Now, what happens is when uh, a goes high let us say initially the flip flops both the flip flops are reset when A goes high this output will go high ok when A goes high this output goes high and this will still be 0. So, the reset inputs are not activated when B goes high this goes high and immediately it resets both the flip flops ok is this clear. So, similarly if B is leading A the opposite happens if B goes high this output will go high and the reset is not activated, but when A goes high both of them are high. So, the reset gets activated and both are immediately reset ok. 
So, in the ideal case, when there are no delays through the flip flops and no rise time, etc., this uh, reset will be a sliver with an, uh, with a very small width. I mean, zero width. Okay. In reality, it will uh, because of finite delays through the blocks, there will be some small width. Okay. A and B will be. I mean, this uh, these two signals will be simultaneously on for some small period of time. The period of time it takes to for the signals to go through the AND gate and reset the flip flops. Now, where is my phase detector output? Both are the same? No. So, if A leads B, what will be this output? So, if A leads B, what will be this output in this case? Huh? Yeah, there are pulses like this between the rising edge of A and rising edge of B. Okay. And what will be this output? The second output? Yeah, so it will be 0. Let us say it is instantaneously reset, so it will just be 0. Okay. And when B leads A, this will be the upper one will be 0 and the lower one will give you a pulse whose width is equal to the phase difference between the two inputs. So, how do I get the, how do I construct the phase detector output? Sum them. Huh? Or get. Now, when B leads A, I need an input of the opposite sign, right? So, I need to take a difference between the two. So, when B leads A, it is like a negative phase difference between A and B. When A leads B, it is a positive phase difference. Let us make that convention. So, in that case, I need to take the difference between these two signals. Okay? So, these are conventionally called the up and down signals. It becomes very clear why this is the case. So, if A leads B, you get the up signal to be high for a certain fraction of the time and the fraction of the time is proportional to the phase difference or it is the phase difference and if uh, B leads A down is uh, high for the same uh, I mean the, for the time for which uh, time corresponding to the phase difference and up is always 0. So, up minus down gives me the phase detector output. What is the var average value of up minus down? What is the value of up minus down? Average value of up minus down? Pi by 2. Pi by 2 pi. Yeah. So, this is the phase difference and this pulse appears once in every cycle which is 2 pi. Okay. So, the average value of up minus down is pi divided by 2 pi. So, the gain of this phase detector is 1 over 2 pi. That is, in reality, I mean, this uh, the output has dimensions of volts, which have like which have said is one volt. So it is one over two pi volts per radian. That is the gain of the phase detector. Why is it different from that of the XOR? Why is the gain? What is the gain of the XOR phase detector? So it is two by pi, right? So yeah. So firstly, it was uh, it gave you two pulses in every period. And also the output was going between plus 1 and minus 1, whereas this goes between 0 and 1 or 0 and minus 1. Okay. That is why it is like this. So, this is better now, right. So, this is not sensitive to duty cycle. What happens when uh, the frequencies are uh, different? What will be the average value? Can you determine the average value of the output in, I mean, I will treat at up minus down as the output. Okay. Huh? Down will be 0. Why? Average value will be 0. What is the average value? Actually, this is a state machine also. It is, I did not start from the state diagram. I started from some other intuitive explanation, but it helps to draw the state machine to analyze this. How many states are there? Huh? How many flip flops are here? Two. So, how many states should be there? Four. Why? Yeah. So, one state is not, uh, if up and down are simultaneously high, it will get reset. So, that state is as good as not being there. Okay. So, there are three states. So, this is one of the states, this is the other state, 
this is the other state. So, there are uh, transitions between potentially transitions between every state and every other state. Okay. So, let us start from uh, this one. So, what happens uh, from this from the middle state what happens if the if you see a rising edge of A goes to this ok and from this uh, from the middle side what happens if you see the rising edge of B goes to the next one ok and from the rightmost one what happens with the rising edge of A remains there and with rising edge of B it goes here similarly this uh, A brings it back to this or if you see a B it will stay here ok. So, when the two inputs are of the same frequency it will uh, keep alternating it will go this so it could go here and come here and go here and come here or it could do this ok it will keep doing one of these two what happens if the frequencies are different. Let us say the in particular the frequency of A is more than the frequency of B. So, like there can be all kinds of transients, but eventually it will end up in the right part of this diagram because so eventually you will see a between two edges of B. Uh, you will see actually two edges of A. So, even if it is on this side it will two consecutive edges of A will take it to this side and then after that it will see edges of A more frequently than it sees edges of B. So, it may come here occasionally or it may cycle around here, but it will certainly not come to this part of the this part of the state diagram right. It will cycle between these two is this clear ok. Because you see two consecutive edges away eventually I mean if you have a frequency away more than frequency of B at some point you will definitely see this ok. So, it will uh, oscillate between these two. So, similarly if frequency of A is less than B it will see two consecutive edges of B and it will oscillate between these two. So, what is the average value half yeah. So, that is what it does give you a non zero average even if uh, I mean it gives you a non zero average if the frequencies are different. So, this is not just a phase detector it is also a phase frequency detector ok. So, let me call this state uh, 1, 2 and 3 ok and the average value will be I think half. So, the capture process is also easier with this it can capture with a wider range of differences and also the capture will be faster because it certainly steers the VCO in definitely in one direction or the other whereas, with the XOR gate it would not do it. So, this is the phase detector that is most commonly used in a <coughs> frequency synthesizer or a phase lock loop ok. So, this is uh, uh, yeah like I said it is frequently used can we use this for uh, random data. Can we use this to find out the difference between clock and data? Why not? Let us say A is uh, clock and B is data, what happens? Yeah, so it will just go to one side and it will not be able to give you any information, ok. So, the clock will certainly have more transitions than data. Okay. So, you cannot use this for random data, but uh, for periodic inputs, this works very well. Okay. So, and this is known as a PFD or a phase frequency detector ok. So, we can stop here now we will close the phase lock loop in the next uh, class. So, what is the average uh, in steady state what will be the average output? So, it will uh, actually this is I think we already worked it out yeah it will be something like this right. Because uh, to have a output frequency different from a free running frequency the VCO needs a non zero control voltage which means that it needs a non zero average from the phase detector which means that it is going to do this ok. 
what is the consequence of having a phase difference? So, in the case of XOR gate, we saw that it also introduces periodic disturbances. What about our new phase detector? Does it also introduce periodic disturbances? It does, right? I mean, the period is different. Previously, it was at uh, twice the input frequency. Now, it is at the input frequency. But uh, if you have non-zero phase difference between the inputs, you will have a pulse strain either on up or down. So, that is a periodic disturbance only, but there is one point where it does not introduce a disturbance that is when uh, the two phases are aligned. Okay. So, we will see what the effect of the periodic disturbance is and how to minimize it. So, like uh, someone suggested this uh, uh, E 1 of t. So, what is what kind of uh, transfer function do you see between E 1 of t and the output? In the frequency domain, the same model is one over n k phi k v c o by s and this, right? So, what type of a transfer function do you see from E one to the output? Is it low pass, high pass, band pass? It is. It will be low pass, right? It is. Uh, the usual g over 1 plus g s where g is the forward path gain and h is the feedback gain. So, disturbances in E of t will be attenuated to some extent, but we will see if it is really practical to do that. Okay. So, what happens like what do I have to do to reduce the contribution of E 1 to the output? The transfer function is k phi k v c o by s divided by 1 plus k phi k v c o by n s right. So, if I write it uh, but how would it help sir the same ratio between delta phi n and e 1 uh, all this yeah that is correct. So, so e 1 is a fixed e 1 gain will affect our delta phi yeah that is correct. So, in effect we have not achieved any improvement to this yeah. So, that is what I was trying to get at. So, you cannot really do that. So, anyway we will uh, treat that in more detail in the next class. Okay. Now, let us take a case for instance where uh, the output frequency that you want is the free running frequency, okay. then the delta phi is 0, then this argument does not apply even then even then it does not well, yeah, but it is true what you say is true that uh, there is a trade off it turns out that there is a trade off between how much disturbance here you uh, how much disturbance you get here from E 1 that will be reduced by reducing k phi and k v c o but it also limits the range of the phase lock loop okay the range over which you can tune the phase lock loop so we'll see that in uh, the next class okay any questions on this plls and so on